Hey folks, Rex Richardson here. I thought I'd take you through my collection of trumpets with a little bit of demo and description of each one. So a couple of caveats here. First of all, this is not a large collection of trumpets by any means. It's actually quite small, probably even for most professional trumpet players, let alone for those who collect all sorts of interesting and historical instruments. I only have modern instruments and it's a pretty small collection of that. So I'll show you what I have. Okay, so this is the entire arsenal, so to speak. You've got your B-flat trumpets. You've got a couple of flugelhorns, same model, but from different years. Uh, there's a B-flat cornet. Here's a C trumpet, an E-flat D trumpet. We see it in E-flat right now. Uh, I've got an F G trumpet. There's the, the G bell. It's an F right now. There are my two piccolo trumpets. One is a the piston valve in B flat right now also can be an A and there is my rotary valve piccolo trumpet also in B flat right now can also be an A and then there's a weird one of the bunch my soprano trombone so most of you probably recognize this as a typical B flat trumpet uh, this is a Yamaha large Borzino this is sort of probably my main instrument these days both for classical and jazz and of course the b-flat trumpet is used very typically in orchestras bands just about every setting jazz band is probably the primary jazz instrument generally so it's the type of instrument probably most people start on these days and you, you for most people unless they have extensive orchestral careers they'll probably play a lot of b-flat throughout their entire career So I do have two B-flat trumpets. This one, which is the Eric Miyashiro model by Yamaha, is sort of my backup trumpet these days. Uh, but for a few years, it was my primary instrument. It's very different from what I'm currently playing at Lars Borzino. It's got sort of a step bore system, meaning some of it is medium bore, some of it medium large, some of it large bore. It's got an oversized bell. It's got some really cool quality. So I'm gonna play it so you can hear a little bit of the difference uh, between this instrument and the Lars Borzino. Okay, so of course this is a B-flat cornet. You can see he's got some tarnish on it because I don't play it very often these days. But uh, of course, it's one of the main instruments in the brass band, it's sort of one of the higher voices. Uh, there is a soprano cornet in E flat, which is a bit higher, which is the true soprano voice of the brass band. But just under that would be the B flat cornets. Um, I tend to play most of the time flugelhorn in the brass band, which is why I don't play this very often. But it's a great instrument, it plays a lot better than it looks these days. It's a Yamaha 62330. Of course, back in the day, a lot of people tended to start on cornet before they moved to trumpet. These days, people are more likely to start on trumpet as young students. But in the UK, uh, specializing on the cornet is, is still a, a very common thing. So, yeah, B-flat cornet, check it out. So this is a B-flat flugelhorn. It's one of the uh, solo voices in the brass band. And of course, it can be used sometimes in orchestra, in concert bands, and um, chamber music it can be used as a solo instrument, very commonly used in jazz. I have another one, and in fact they are identical, except that this one is a good deal older, and I took off the lacquer. But let's see if you can hear a little difference in the sound between the one that is newer and lacquered and the older one which has its lacquer taken off.
this is Yamaha's third generation of the Chicago model. I just bought it a few months ago. Um, I love it. I don't get to play as much sea trumpet these days. Uh, mostly if I do, it's in some solo repertoire, classical repertoire. But it's also used very commonly as an orchestral instrument, especially in American orchestras and French orchestras and a few other countries around the world where it's very much preferred. Uh, in some countries like the UK and Germany, they prefer B-flat trumpets uh, in the orchestra, but C trumpet is very popular over here. Um, it also works great, as I mentioned, as a solo instrument and a chamber music instrument. So, see what you think. So now this is my E flat trumpet. It has uh, different pipes I can put on to pitch it in D. Now the E flat trumpet is used in a variety of settings, chamber music settings, uh, solo settings quite a bit on occasion in the orchestra. Um, I think people most commonly use it to play some of the, the famous concertos that are in the key of E flat, the Haydn and the Hummel. And the Hummel was originally done in the key of E natural, which of course is not so friendly for B flat instruments or E flat instruments. And so many times people do it in E flat. Uh, historically, they have uh, done so because it's easier. But uh, I like to do it in E natural on the D trumpet. It works pretty well. But for now, here's the E flat trumpet. The sound is really close with the D, so I'm just going to demonstrate with one set of pipes. Okay, so this is something of a rare beast. This is my trumpet in F, which uh, can also be used with the uh, G pipes and bell. Um, it's used mostly, I would say, in chamber music for, for special parts where the piccolo doesn't seem quite right and neither do the big instruments. I don't think people play them all that often these days. The G trumpet was made fairly famous by Rolf Smedvig, the uh, one of the trumpet players in the Empire Brass because he used it all the time. It was quite a brilliant effect. But, um, yeah, see what you think. Now we come to the piccolo trumpet. So this one, of course, is piston valves. It can be pitched in B-flat as it is now, or pitched in A with a different pipe. And so the piccolo trumpet was originally designed in the 20th century as a means of dealing with uh, Baroque rep, which is originally played on natural trumpets. It was, a, for a time, something of a lost art. It's no longer a lost art. People have uh, really uh, rejuvenated the art form of playing natural trumpet and period instruments generally. So these days, it's still used sometimes for Baroque repertoire, but uh, it's also used for a lot of contemporary music and sometimes for jazz. In fact, I play it in jazz all the time. It's one of my preferred jazz instruments. So see what you think. This is also a piccolo trumpet in B-flat, but as you can see, this one has rotary valves. And the main difference between the two instruments is really a matter of, of tone color. Uh, as is typical for rotary valve brass instruments, they tend to have a little bit of a warmer, kind of more vocal sound. And the same is true with the piccolo. The problem for me is I'm not really used to the rotary valve action, especially with this fourth valve. So I've got a little bit of clumsiness to my technique. But I love the sound, and in fact, I'm trying to work towards making it my main jazz piccolo trumpet. Okay, 
Okay, we've come to the last and most unusual of the instruments in the arsenal or menagerie, if you if you prefer. This is a soprano trombone or a slide trumpet. So it's rarely played for a couple of reasons. I think trombone players mostly don't see the use for it. They seem to cover everything they need to with the bass and tenor and alto trombones and more rarely the contrabass. And the mouthpiece shank is for a trumpet mouthpiece. So a trombone player would need to adapt to a trumpet mouthpiece in order to play it. And for trumpet players, well, we have pretty crummy slide technique unless we practice for years. So that's something I'm still working on. I don't ever see myself using this necessarily as a classical instrument, but I can use it in a few jazz settings. So I'll give you a little bit of a demonstration of that. Okay, everybody, thank you so much for watching. Here's a final review of the small collection. Obviously, I'm still working on the slide technique. Hmm, we'll have to see about this.